Angular has three types of directives, components, structural directives, and attribute directives. A component is really a directive with a template. And as you may guess, it is the most common of the three directives and we write a lot of them as we build our applications. In this lecture, let's take a look at structural directives, in particular, the ng-if and ng for structural directives. A structural directive is designed to alter the DOM layout by adding or removing DOM elements. Let's start with the ng-if structural angular directive. ng-if will conditionally render the DOM element that the directive is on. Structural directives are applied to normal DOM elements using the asterisk template syntax. So on the element, we need to put asterisk ngf and set that equal to a statement that will evaluate to either true or false. So back in Visual Studio Code, let's create a property in our app component called isAvailable and make use of that in our ngif directive. In our template, let's create a div and apply our ng-if directive to it. Over in the browser, we can see that the div is now visible. Now if we change the value of is available to false and save the file, we should notice that the div will not be visible anymore. So we can use ngif to conditionally render the DOM elements. Another common Angular built-in structural directive is ng4. The ng4 directive is used to repeat markup when looping over some data. Let's put the ng4 to use. Our goal is to present a list of items. We define a block of HTML that defines how a single item should be displayed. We tell Angular to use that block as the template for rendering each item in the list. So let's go back to our app.component.ts file and create a list. It's going to be a list of products. Now we want to display this list of products in our template. To do this, we make use of the ng4 structural directive and here's how we do it. Over in the browser, we see that the products are listed. So in this example, the string let product of products tells Angular to take each product in the products array, store it in the local product variable, and make it available to the templated HTML for each iteration. And since we are making use of the local variable product, to display the product name, we'll have to do product.name. Now let's go ahead and display the quantity as well. This time, we'll put the product name and the quantity in two different divs. And when we notice in the browser, we can see that both the product name and the quantity are displayed as expected. 